chemistry from University of Antioquia, Colombia, where he currently works as professor and researcher. Professor Santa Maria leads the research in combustion chemistry in the Chemical and Energy Resource Environment Research Group. His fields of study are combustions, biofuels, chemical characterization of particulate matter and precursors. He has published numerous papers and has participated in several presentations and exhibitions around the world. Are 15 minutes. In order to control the time for presentation, a green card will be kept on the table, indicating that you are in time. When there are two minutes remaining, a yellow card will be placed on the table, and when the, the time is left, uh, I will put the, the red card. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Shema, for the introduction. The presentation that I'm going to give you today is going to be related to the effect of heat and of um, the uh, emission of soot particles uh, from combustion. Uh, this approximation is going to be not only from the phenomenological point of view, but also from the chemistry point of view, uh, an aspect that has been uh, less related in the scientific lecture. Let's get and uh, do a very brief introduction about, about this topic. We already know that the use of fossil fuels in combustion uh, brings some uh, many problems related with the emission of pollutants. And some of those, uh, one of, among those pollutants, uh, the emission of soot particles is uh, uh, the great importance. Uh, Many studies have been addressed uh, this, this topic, not only because the emission of soot particles can uh, uh, contribute to the greenhouse effect, but also because there are some uh, uh, health uh, problems related with it. Uh, for that reason, we need to find uh, some regulation or some kind of uh, alternative to, to control the emission of soot particles to the environment. So one of the, well, the alternatives that have been carried out so far are related with the design of new models, and, uh, new engines, and new combustion devices, as well uh, by using oxygen-enriched combustion and additives. Among the additives most commonly used are really based on metallic and oxygenated compounds. Uh, we are going to be focused on the, in this case, which is uh, or makes part of the oxygenated compounds. But in order to understand the, the effect of ethanol at a molecular level, it is important to uh, recognize what are the main processes of the soup formation. So the soup formation process as a whole can be described in five general steps as is shown in this in this picture. The first step uh, consists uh, uh, to the uh, molecular precursor formation, uh, followed by soil section, growth, agglomeration, and oxidation. Taking into account this, this process uh, could help to understand the, the effect of the additives. For example, uh, Alkaline additives can inhibit the, the insection and agglomeration process. Whereas the additives coming from transition metals uh, act more like a, a catalyst, uh, facilitating the oxidation process. But what happened with the ethanol? Well, there are certain uh, controversies are around this. Most of the study agrees that the ethanol reduces the uh, emission, the soup particle emissions, but there are other studies that uh, think the opposite. And we think that the 
The easy difficulties and it's all related with the fuel nature, and that's what we are going to study in, in this in this work. The main goal uh, of this work is to evaluate the effect of ethanol on the morphology and chemistry of soup form during combustion process. To do that, we need to obtain chemical information of the soot generated from different fuels and different con ethanol concentration. And also, we, we need to evaluate the morphology of the soot produced in flame with and without ethanol. However, for, however to, to study the effect of ethanol at a molecular level, it is important to choose uh, the appropriate configuration device. In this case, the inverse diffusion plane is the most appropriate one. The inverse diffusion plane is basically well, the opposite version of a normal diffusion plane. Uh, The inverse diffusion plane is obtained just by inverting the air and fuel position. In this case, the air goes to the central tube and the fuel goes outside. This configuration allows that the combustion product, including soot, comes out, come out of the flame without passing through the main reaction zone. So the oxidation of the soot particle is less strong and the characteristics of this particle are are called John soup. Also, the, the, the particle can be collected from the surroundings without uh, needing to invade the, uh, in, without invading the flame with a sampling probe. In this case, the soup samples were collected along, along the lateral axis of the flame at different positions, and the soup samples were weighted and uh, extracted with chloroform. The solid, the, the, the solid organic fire attractions were analyzed by different techniques and the morphology were, was studied by TEM analysis. Well, the model fuels used in this case are hexane, benzene, toluene, and a mixture of uh, aliphatic and aromatic compounds. The ethanol concentration evaluated in this study uh, uh, are 0, 10, and 20 percent. Okay, from the phenomenological point of view, uh, the, result, the results obtained indicate that the uh, ethanol uh, added to the fuel reduces the amount of soot of the different flames that we evaluated here. Mm. 